Europe and Africa Conference, Zambia, Bishop Stephen. Amen. Thank you very, very much. I truly appreciate it. Everybody out there, uh, it's a blessing connecting as we begin to realize the vision of associating together here in Africa. I think uh, it's been long overdue. We thank God for the business and of uh, the, the visionary in New York. We are very grateful that finally we can kickstart this work here in Africa. Amen. Thank you so much. I have the um, subject talking about called monitoring time. Monitoring time. Yes. Um, very, very uh, interesting project. I will be able to run through together. Um, very important to work with God. I'll read from Luke chapter number 12, beginning verse 57. Just myself. Actually, before I begin, uh, Bishop Stephen here in Zambia, as Bishop Gary had said, I do have a few the work of the Lord here. And um, I've been linked up and working with Harvest Army for many, many years. Uh, Bishop Gary has been here together with the visionary from New York. They have visited us here, and it has been so good. And I too have been um, uh, with Bishop Gaddy back in Nottingham, the UK. Amen. So we, it's now a blessing that we can begin to connect among ourselves. I've been in touch with Bishop Bonfet for a couple of years now, just talking here and there. Uh, Hallelujah. Thank you so much for us really to be working together. Amen. Thank you so much. God. Yes. Uh, the Bible, I will read from Luke chapter 12, verse 54. Luke chapter number 12, verse 54. The Bible says, This way to the cloud, when you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say it is going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say it is going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret the present time? How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? I think Jesus is speaking to the crowds around him. He's trying to draw them to understand the current time. He wants them to know and to understand what was going on. And he gives a metaphor, a picture of what they could understand. And he said, when you look at the rain, you look at the skies, you are able to interpret and to understand that it's about to rain. Uh, you understand very well, he said, the appearance of the earth, the things that are happening here on earth. But you cannot understand or interpret this present time, or you cannot discern you cannot uh, be able to, to to come to terms with what is happening currently, the season and the times that you are in. In short, he expected them to understand. He expected them to understand. And I think God expects us. One of the things that God expects us is to understand. In short, if we're going to monitor the time of God, to monitor meaning to, to supervise, to be able to be very clear with what to do with the time that 
not supervise it. We cannot know what to do if we do not understand with, I mean, the time. That means either we can miss the time or we can be able to, uh, to, to misuse the time that the Lord, or to abuse the time that God has given us. So there must be an understanding for us to look after time. To monitor it can simply mean to look after our time, the time that God has given us, or to be able to monitor the time, to be able to, to supervise the time, uh, that's the same word, to monitor. However, for us to monitor the time, to supervise, to make use of it, to be able to to bring the time that God has given us into full use, unless we understand it, we are unable to monitor it. And we cannot understand if we don't have information. I think information gives us understanding. Information gives us understanding. And we draw information from the Word. As we read the Word, we draw information from revelation as God gives us revelation. We draw information sometimes from experience. The experiences that we have in the kingdom, that we have uh, in, uh, in the service of God, it gives us that leads us or it makes us have proper understanding. So as the Bible talks about, I mean, as we talk about monitoring time, I want to just to recap that it is important, beloved ones, that we understand the time. And to understand the time, it's important that we are the people that seek information, that seek information. And information, we are able to get information through, as we read the word and through reading, studying, so that we have got information too, through revelation, as God reveals it and God opens our eyes in a season to understand what is going on by the revelation of the Spirit of God. But also we get information through experience through experience. Sometimes God allows us to go through certain experience because God wants us to know. God wants us to know so that we can understand what is going on. We can understand what is happening. We can understand what is around us uh, by the grace of God. Uh, let me support that with the Bible tells us the Bible uh, tells us about the sons of Issachar. When we read First Chronicles chapter 12, verse number 32. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse number 32. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse number 32. The Bible said in 32 of the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times. They had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. To know what Israel ought to do. Their chiefs were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. So God gave them understanding. They understood the time so that they are able to know what to do. Without understanding, they would not have known what to do at that time. So in short, sometimes we don't do certain things. We don't have a corresponding action because we don't have understanding. And because we don't have understanding, we cannot monitor, we cannot monitor that time. We cannot monitor that time. We cannot provide that time. We cannot respond to that time. We cannot know what to do in that time. So for us to know what to do in the times of God, 
we must have understanding uh, concerning that time to understand what this time means in our lives what this time is calling us to do just like uh, Bishop Bonfess when he was preaching when he was teaching us he talked about the scripture that was talking about the, the need for laborers because there is a harvest because there is a harvest the harvest is calling for, for for laborers and the Lord says the Lord the Bible say see the laborers are few the harvest is ripe the harvest is plenty that means if we cannot see as he said we can do nothing about it we need understanding we need to understand the time that God like just like the time that we are in right now we need to be un to understand this time we need to be sensitive to this time we need to be able to know this time and the Bible says the Lord gave the sons of Issachar an understanding of the times so that they may know what to do so that they may be able to command Israel they may be able to speak to Israel they may be able to tell Israel what to do according to the time uh, according to the season that God had brought upon them and without that it means they would miss the time they would miss what they needed to do at that time or at that season may god really help us uh beloved may god give us the grace that as we live in these times that we are living in that we don't miss what god wants us to do that we may move with god according to his timing we may hear God according to his timing and we may do the right thing according to the timing of God because we need to do the right thing at the right time. We need to do the right thing at the right time. There are certain things we can do but when we do them out of time they cannot have an impact. I repeat, we can do certain things, but if we do them out of God's time, they will not have the same impact, they will not have the same influence, they will not have the same power, they will not have the same uh, grace and anointing in the time. So we must be sensitive. What does God wants us to do in this time? Because we understand the timing of God. And because we have understood the timing of God, we will do the right thing according to what God is saying and what God is speaking at that time. That is monitoring, monitoring time. That is monitoring time. So that we don't miss what the Holy Spirit, we don't miss what God is saying. God is bringing us together. God is uniting us. God is bonding us together. God is tying us together in this time. And we need to know what the Lord, what the Holy Spirit is saying in this time. The harvest is ripe. The harvest is plenty. It's a time of harvest. It's a time of revival. Hallelujah. It's a time of awakening. It's a time of great awakening. It's a time of great renewal. That means, beloved ones, we are not going to do the same things as we did long before. We've got to know what the Holy Spirit is saying for this time, for this season, for this moment. Glory to God. So that we are on the cutting edge. So that we are on the cutting edge. So that we are able, by the grace of the Lord Jesus, we are able to do what is on the heart of the Holy Spirit and what is on the heart of God. Glory to God. I say glory, glory. to God. Hallelujah. And if we fail to understand, if we cannot understand, we cannot monitor. And if we cannot monitor God's time, we miss the time of God. 
We miss the season of God. We miss the moment of God. But may God help us. But we, be, we won't be able to miss the timing of God. We won't be able to miss the season of God. So that together we can monitor, we can supervise, we can we can be able to, to do what God is up for us to do in this time and in this season. Glory to God. I say glory to God. May God help us. So number one, it's very, I want us just to write this to your thing. God expects us to monitor his time. God expects us to monitor. God expects us to understand his time. It's the expectation of God. It's the expectation of the Lord that we monitor, we understand, we, we meet the time of God. God expects us. Therefore, it is very important for us in the times that we are living in, it's very important for us to carry the mind of God. We cannot monitor, we cannot understand God's time unless we carry the mind of God. Unless we carry the mind of God. Unless we carry the mind of God. The mind of God will give us understanding of the time. That's why the sons of Issachar, they understood the time of God. They, they, they spoke like prophets. They, they had insight. They had insight among the 12 tribes of Israel. The sons of Issachar had an insight to, to monitor the time of God, to understand the time of God. They carried the mind of God. If we can't have the mind of God, we can miss God. We can miss the time of the Lord. We can miss the timing of the Lord or the time of the Holy Spirit. That's why scripture tells us in Romans chapter number 12, the, the book of Romans, Romans chapter 12, from this number one, the Bible says we need to offer ourselves a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to God. Holy and acceptable to the Lord. And the scripture continues to say, therefore, we need to renew our mind. We need to renew our mind. Our minds must be renewed. Why? So that we think and we carry the mind of God at all times. And for us to understand the time of the Lord, we must have the mind of God. Therefore, our mind must be changed. Our minds must be transformed. Our minds must be full of the thoughts of God, must be full of God's mindset so that we are able to think like God. We are able to understand the way God is understanding at any given time. So may God help us. To ask the loved ones to... For us, as I said, we need, we, God expects us, he expects us to monitor time. For us to monitor time, we must have the, uh, the mind of God. Secondly, for us to, uh, for us, as the Lord expects us to monitor time, for us to be in that, uh, in that way that God expects us to be, we must be a people that must be able to carry the heart of God. We must carry the heart of God. We must be united with God. Our hearts, our passion, our desire, our desire, our longing. We must carry the heart of God. We must be a people that are carrying the heart of the Lord. Secondly, quickly, secondly, it's important as, as we, we deal with this subject, it is very, very important. First of all, God expects us, God expects us to, to, to monitor time. God expects us to monitor time. Secondly, God expects us not to meet his time because it's possible to miss the time of God. If we can't monitor time, uh, the way I've explained it, it's possible to miss the time of God. God expects us, God expects us, God expects us not 
not to miss the time of God. It's possible for us to miss the time of God. And anyway, how many times have we missed God's time? And how many times have we misused God's time? How many times have we abused God's time? The Lord expects us not to miss God's time. Not to miss God's time. First Kings, if you look at the book, I mean the word of God in First Kings, if you look at the word of God in First Kings, Elijah is having a very tense moment, a very troubled time in his life and ministry. He's having a very troubled life in his time and ministry. And at this time, Elijah feels hey, it's over. He needs just to give up. I need it's better I just wrap up. It's better I die. And the Bible tells us in First Kings chapter number 19, the Lord meets Elijah and God tells Elijah, I want to meet you. I want to speak to you. I want you to go. Go to the cave. And Elijah goes ahead to the cave. And as he reaches the cave, scripture tells us, in that cave where he was, Elijah was on his knees. He was praying, was crying. Remember, he's going through a very rough time, a very rough moment. The Lord has sent him over there to meet him. And as he's in the cave, the Lord said to him, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to bypass or to pass by. God is about to pass by. That is verse 11. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. He stood at the mouth of the cave. But listen, beloved ones, Elijah, Elijah is going through a very difficult time, circumstances that would have made him miss God and God's time in his life. And as we are saying, God expects us not to miss his time. First of all, God expects us to monitor time with him, not to miss time. And this time, Elijah is facing the possibility of missing God and missing the time of God. As he goes on that mountain, God says, you stand in my presence, for there I'm about to bypass or I'm about to pass by. And the Bible says events began to take place. There was a great and powerful wind, a great and powerful wind that begins to tear the mountains. But the Bible says God was not, the Lord was not in that wind, a very big wind, a wind that is breaking the mountains, a wind that is tearing apart the mountain. And humanly speaking, it's possible to feel this is a miracle. It's possible to feel this is the power of God. It's possible to feel this is God who is shattering, who is breaking the mountain. But the Bible says God is not in that wind. That wind is not of God. You know, many times there is a lot, there are a lot of movement, a lot of things that begins to happen sometimes and sometimes the things that happen sometimes they they, they, they detect and they look like this is God and sometimes we are able to miss God because we are being moved by what we are seeing we are being moved by what we see from the outside and that's why when we talk about monitoring time 
we must be able to discern. The Bible says the sons of Issachar, they descend the times. They understood the times so that they know what to do at that time. Elijah is standing in the presence of God and the wind is shaking the mountains, but Elijah is not moved. He's not moved. You understand? This may not be God. This can mislead me. This may not be God moving at this time. Glory to God. How I pray, beloved one, that in the times and the seasons that we are living in, that God will give us discernment. God will give us discernment. Not every miracle is the miracle of God. <laughs> Not everything that we see from the outside tells us this is God. We are living in a time where it's easy to be misled. It's easy. It's easy to be moved by 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 many, even sometimes, even wrong spirits, wrong things that that look like this can be God, and and sometimes God is not there, and God is not even being glorified, because everything that God is doing uh, must glorify God, must honor God, must, must bring glory to the name of the Lord. God was not in the way. God was not no matter what was happening, no matter what was going on, no matter what was uh, what was being shown, uh, or what was humanly speaking, what was coming forth to the eyes of Elijah, Elijah was dead. Hallelujah! I say Hallelujah! Amen! Hallelujah! Amen! Amen! Men of God, may we be steady in the place of God. As we seek the Lord in our time, to understand the time, to monitor the time of God, so that we are made that discern, that we are able to discern what God is doing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Bible says, after the wind, there was an earthquake. But God was not in the earthquake. God was not in the earthquake. My God, my God, my God. My God, my God, my God. May God help us. But God was not in the earthquake. And when he was a mature prophet, he was a man that had grown and was a mature prophet. He was a mature man who, in the ministry, he could discern what was of God and what was not of God. All these things are happening, but he was able to discern that though there is this earthquake, God is not in the earthquake. By the Spirit of God, he was able to discern. He was able to understand so that he may know what to do at that time. We're going to monitor time. We're going to monitor time. We're going to discern the time. We're going to understand the time, beloved. We're going to be men and women of God in the times that we are living in. Because we cannot know what to do if we do not understand the time. And if we don't know what to do, we can miss God's timing. Because every time that God gives us, it has got a mandate. Every time that God gives us, it has got a mission. Every time God gives us just an assignment, every season has an assignment, glory to God. Every season has a mandate, just like God is bringing us together in this season. There is an assignment for this season, that which God wants us to do, that which God wants us to do together by the grace of God. And Elijah, as a mature prophet, he understands. He's not moved by an earthquake. He's not moved by the wind that is blowing. Oh, may God help us. May God help us. May God help us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible says, even after the great earthquake, there came the fire. But God was not in the fire. God was not in the fire. It's so easy sometimes, beloved one, to follow the wind because the crowds are following the wind. It's so easy, beloved ones, to follow the, 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 the earthquake and the noise of the earthquake because the crowds are following the earthquake. It's so easy, beloved 
everyone who has to struggle, the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire, and sometimes not every struggle is of God. Not every fire is of God. Just because God answered my fire yesterday, it doesn't mean the fire I see today is of God. Some fires are made by men, and God may not be in that fire. We must have the discernment in the time of God so that we can do the right thing in God's time. Because when we do the right thing in the time of God, it brings fruit, it brings harvest, it brings fruit, it brings a mighty harvest in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. That means our responsibility to understand and monitor the time of God is to seek God, to be man that dwells in the presence of God, to be man that understands the Lord. Hallelujah. As the Bible tells us in the book of Daniel 11, verse 32 and 33, the Bible speaks to us. The Bible says, those who know they are God, they shall be strong. And they shall do exploits. Those who do know they are God. We must dwell. We must stay with the Lord. We must have the heart of God. The passion for God. To have the heart of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the fire, God was not there. Even in the fire. But look what scripture says. After the fire came a gentle whisper. There came a gentle whisper. After the fire came a gentle, a still small voice. And when Elijah heard it, he pulled his clock. He knew what to do. <laughs> the earthquake came. He never pulled his clock. The wind came. He never pulled his clock. Hey, God help us. The fire came. He never pulled his clock. But when he heard the word of God, when he heard the voice of God, the gentle whisper of the voice of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says he put his cloak over his face. He paid reverence to the new this is God. God is on that mountain. God is on that mountain. And the Bible says he covered his face and he stood at the mouth of the cave. He stood at the mouth. He went to you what to do. When you understand this is God, you know what to do, beloved. We know what to do. There is a corresponding action of obedience. There is a corresponding action. And obedience begins to bring God's results. In the time of God, we must understand his time. And as we understand his time, we monitor the time of God. And in monitoring the time of God, we know that this time has come with an assignment. This time has come with a calling. This time has come with a command. This time has come with instructions. Because every season of God has God's instruction. Has God's instruction. That's why when God brings us to a season, we must seek Him. What is He speaking? What is He saying? What are the instructions of God? What are the instructions of the Holy Spirit? As a writer, Elijah received the instructions of God. The Bible said the Lord spoke to him, Elijah, this is not the end. You are not going to die. Go and anoint Jehu. Go and anoint Jehu. Jehu will destroy Jezebel. And go and anoint Elisha. That means your ministry is not coming to an end. It's going to the next generation. It's going to the next generation. So what was meant to be over? Because God had... The ministry was being extended. The ministry was being... And may God help us. My prayer is, beloved ones... As we look at monitoring time, may we understand the time that we are living in because we cannot monitor what we do not understand. And out of understanding of time, 
why. May we know what we should do. Because every time comes with God's assignment, instructions, calling, and every time comes with specific word what God wants us to do in the season of God. So may God give us his heart to pray. May God give us his heart to be in the presence of the Lord, to seek him for the time that God has given us. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I say glory to God. So let's not chase the spectacular, but let's go for the presence of God. Let's go for the relationship with God. As the Bible says, he was not in the wind, he was not in the fire, he was not in the earthquake, but a man needed to know God. If he never knew God, he was not going to know the voice of God. May we know the voice of God in this time so that we can hear what God is speaking in his time. Because we cannot monitor time effectively if we have no understanding. Hallelujah. Number three, please. Number three, the third thing. Number three. Number three. It is possible. It is possible to miss God's time. It's possible to miss the time of God. And may we not miss his time. Elijah could have missed such a great opportunity of being renewed, being revived. He was tired. He was famished. He was weary. He was giving up. It looked as if nothing was working, nothing was happening. But God gave him a chance. God gave him an opportunity. And if he missed the voice of God, if he had missed that moment, if he had missed that time, he could have missed great. He could have missed a big part of his ministry, a big part of his calling. But the Bible tells us he heard the voice of God. He was revived. He was renewed. He was refreshed by God. And he went back to serve God in a greater measure. He anointed Elisha. He anointed Jehu, who did great thereafter. So it's possible for us to miss God. May we not miss the time of God. It's possible for us to miss the time of the Lord. It's possible for us to miss God's time. But may we not be so. May we not be the ones who can miss God's time in our lives. I repeat, may we not be the ones who can miss God's time in our lives. Jacob, Jacob could have missed God's time. When we read Genesis 28, verse number 15. Genesis 28, verse number 15. In verse 15, the Bible says, let me jump for time. Verse 16, when Jacob woke up, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware. God is in this place. And I was not aware of it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is not other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. You know, as he was seeing that vision of that dream, he didn't know that God was in that place. God was in, was God was just next to him. He didn't realize that God was there. But somehow the Bible says as he woke up, when he woke up, then it dawned on him. He realized that the God is in this place. And because of that, you see, when you understand God or the time of God, you will know what to do. That's why every time and season that God brings, as I have said, it comes with instructions. It comes with assignment. It comes with a calling. And the Bible says here, when he realized that God was in that place, he quickly acted. The Bible 
Bible says he quickly acted. He says, how awesome is this place? This is a powerful place. This is a god ordained place. And this place is not other than the house of God. The gate of God, he called it. And from that time, he called it Bethel. El Bethel. That place, he called it. He acted. He responded. He raised an altar. He raised a memorial in that place. He raised an altar, a memorial. That from this time, this place will remain the place of God, the gateway to heaven. He moved in. He acted upon. Because when you miss God's time, you will miss what to do. Many people right now, they are doing things that they shouldn't be doing in that time, in that season. We need pray. We need to seek God. Men of God, I encourage you. We need to seek the Lord. We need to seek God in this time, Lord. What, what are you calling me to do? What are you speaking upon my life for me to do or for us to do? What are your instructions right now, oh God? What are you saying for us to do at this time in my life? People miss God. It's possible for people to miss God's time in their lives. In Second Chronicles chapter number 7, Second Chronicles chapter number 7, Second Chronicles chapter number 7. The Bible says, Because you have put your trust in the king of Aram, instead of in the Lord your God, you missed your chance to destroy the army of the king of Aram. You missed your chance. You missed your time. You missed your opportunity. You missed your moment. <laughs> Let's not miss the moment of God. God's time requires obedience. God's time requires us to respond to him, to obey him. May we move in the obedience of God. The other scripture I can give where people miss the time of God. We remember in the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis, Remember the time of Noah, Genesis chapter number 5. In the time of Noah, when God spoke, he warned the people, he warned them concerning the, the judgment of the flood that was to come. But their hearts were adamant, they could not respond. But when time came, when the moment came, Noah obeyed God. Because every time in God's time, obey God. Obey God. We must obey the. He obeyed God. Therefore, he was saved. Therefore, he was saved. His family was saved. But the, the, but the others, they perished. They didn't obey God. They missed God's time. When we miss God's time, we misplace our ministries. We misplace our ministries. Our ministries, they begin to operate out of time. Therefore, our impact is affected. Therefore, the cutting edge is affected. Obey God when God speaks. Let's move with God's time by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. The Samaritan woman, the Samaritan, the good Samaritan rather, the good Samaritan story, the man missed an opportunity to do what was right. He missed a great opportunity until there came another man, the priest, the, 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 the Pharisees, the, the missed a good time, missed an opportunity this was an opportunity to minister. It was an opportunity to serve. It was an opportunity to fulfill what God wanted him to fulfill. He missed it. He missed it. I encourage everybody on the forum tonight, I mean this afternoon, beloved. May God give you.
give you the grace in the time of God. Don't miss God's time. Jesus. Let's move with time. Let's monitor time. Amen. Amen. Let's do what God wants us to do at the right time. Let's obey God when God is obedient. This is time for others. This is time to go out. Let's not meet the opportunity by the grace of God. Finally, let me say this. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this, brothers and sisters out there. It's a tragedy. The tragedy of failing to monitor time. The tragedy of failing to monitor time, to monitor time. That's number three. The tragedy of failing to monitor time. How leaders, when they fail to monitor time, when they fail to descend time, when leaders fail to move with time, number one, they lose direction. Leaders lose direction. They become directionless. They begin to follow the crowds. Elijah refused to follow the earthquakes. He refused to follow the wind. He refused to follow the fire. Elijah chose to follow God. He had to hear the voice of God. Glory to God. That's tragedy number one. When you fail to monitor time, when you fail to understand time as a leader, you lose direction in your life. You become visionless as a leader. Or I become visionless. God restored Elijah by hearing from God. So let me say this, beloved. Anywhere we have missed God, let us go back to the cave. Let us go back to the cave and seek God. Let us go back and pray. Let us go back and wait upon the Lord so that we can hear God once again. When Elijah began to miss God, he started wandering about. He was running from place to place. He was directionless, running away from Jezebel from one place to another until in the presence of God he encountered God. Any area in ministry in our calling where we have missed God, can we go back into his presence? Can we go back to seek the Lord so that God can give us direction again? When we miss, we cannot monitor time, the time of God, we lose direction. Number two, number two, we do not only lose direction when we fail to monitor time, when we miss time, the time of God. Secondly, secondly, we lose our peace. There is no peace in us as leaders. We lose our peace. Because peace is there when we are in the will of God. Peace is there when we are in the time of God. It doesn't matter. We may be surrounded by trouble. But if we are in God's time, God will make a way for us. We may be surrounded by mountains. God will level mountains. When we are in God's time, when we are... We stick to monitoring the time of God. Therefore, let us learn to monitor time, to stay, and understanding the timing of God so that we will know what to do. Number three, when you miss time, you miss monitoring time, we miss God's opportunities. As leaders, we miss God's opportunities, opportunities of glory, opportunities of divine manifestation, opportunities
opportunities of fulfilling God's vision in our lives, we miss opportunities. We may not even be able to see when opportunities come because we are not in God's time. May God help us. May God help us. As we live together as a mission harvest army here in Africa, as God continues to bring us together, may God open our eyes that we may understand the time that we are in as Africa. We may understand the time we are in as Harvest Army. As we have heard the founder declaring revival, declaring awakening, declaring it's a time of harvest. May we see that time, that it's an opportunity to showcase the power and the glory of God, to showcase the harvest of God in our time.